Now, one of the big problems we have with working from photographs, and there's a lot of problems with dealing with photographs, but one of the big ones is how do we interpret the photograph? Because if we're not interpreting the photograph, deciding what we want the painting to say, what we end up doing is just copying the photograph. And we end up with a bad copy of, of a photograph. Um, but as an artist, we want to in, in, interpret the scene, the landscape, the still life, whatever it is we're painting, and make it say what we want it to say. And again, not to be just a copy of the, of the photograph. So uh, there are things we need to think about, uh, different options we have, uh, looking at the reference that helps to interpret more than just copy. So I have some paintings here we're going to look at first to see how other artists have done it. Then we're going to look at some photographs and change them to make the emphasis what I want it to be instead of the photograph. Or sometimes I'm showing the painting with the photograph to show how I've, I've interpreted the photograph. So that's the key here. And you can call it finding the focal point. I don't think a, a painting always has to have a definite focal point, but there is a place in every painting where we're gonna have the darkest dark, the lightest light, or the most contrast, the sharpest edge, the strongest color. And if we're not thinking about that and interpreting that to make the painting work better, the painting's just not gonna work. We're gonna have sharp edges, strong color, strong contrast all over the painting, and it's not gonna read well. And it could be the viewer doesn't understand why it doesn't read well, but they're going to see it doesn't read well because you're just all over the place with those aspects of painting. Strong color, sharp edges, the most contrast. So starting here first with a painting by um, Arthur Streeton, an Australian painter, um, early 20th century. And here he's using a couple of things to find you know, the focal point to interpret his scene, I doubt he used photographs here. He probably painted this outside. Um, interpret the scene and, and, and make it say what he wants it to say. So here the focal point or where he wants the viewer to look first is right there. It's very obvious. Sometimes it's really obvious in your photograph what the focal point is, and sometimes it's not. But here it's pretty obvious. It's not the tree over here with the two posts. It's definitely the house and the dark trees. The reason is because that's where the most contrast is. This area has the most contrast. Darkest dark, lightest light, uh, biggest shapes of dark and light as well. Now there's a real light light on the path, but there's not a real dark dark big enough or the most contrast like it is up here. So that's definitely the focal point. Then, so he has the darkest dark, lightest light, the most contrast here, plus he has sharpest edges on the rooftops uh, against the dark tree. So using strong value contrast, sharp edges, um, you know, strongest colors, got some yellows in there that really stand out. He doesn't really have a lot of strong colors, he's got strong color here. So it's not so much color oriented as it is value contrast and sharp edges. And that really draws your eye. There's nothing in the painting as sharp as right there or right there. And to say, well, how do you know he thought about that? I, that's what artists do. They place those things where they want people to look first. So that's the first thing you do is you look at this. Then you come back and pick up this pattern or line of the path that leads you up in here and around and back over again. Uh, so, you know, somewhat carefully thought through. It's not just randomly picking a scene and then copying exactly what you see. You have to think through where you're going to put those things. And you also think about what it is that made you take the photograph or pick the spot to paint. There's something there that drew you and somewhere in there is going to be the sharpest edge, strongest color. So, and I have, you know, a lot of landscapes it can be big, a lot going on. I don't necessarily have a focal point, but there is going to be a spot in, in, in each painting that's going to have, again, most contrast, sharpest edge, strongest color. 
Here's a painting by uh, George Clausen, who's a British painter, early 20th century. And here, dark is dark, light is light is here. So that's focal point. That's what you see first when you look at the painting. Then you can pick up some of these patterns or lines of light that lead you up here or over to here and then around again. So a lot going on there. Um, but there's still thought as to where the darkest dark is. Sharpest edges are on this figure, especially right on here on that edge. Really sharp edges there. And that draws your eye to those, those spots. Now, everything is interesting. Everything's important, you know, in the painting. But this is the emphasis right here. So it helps to have an emphasis. Maybe the figure here is a secondary interest. And there's a painting by um, Jack Wilkinson Smith, California Impressionist, uh, early 20th century. And here's got the strongest and biggest contrast. I mean, there's contrast here and there's contrast here, but the biggest contrast is right there. So your eye goes there first, then down to these contrasts down here and picks up this line on the path that helps you wind around the painting. Not that every painting has to have a path or a road or something real obvious like that. It could be a pattern of rock. It could be just a different colored grass that kind of pulls the eye back a little bit. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be always real obvious. As a matter of fact, it shouldn't be too obvious. You want to be more subtle in some of those things. But um, And then the sharpest edges, too, I think, are on this, this mountain between the light and the dark. Last one here before we get to some references. It's Alfred West. He was a British painter. Here the darkest dark, lightest light. It's probably this area. That's kind of the focal point. That's what you see first. Then your eye picks up this line or pattern of light sheep. They stand out, I think, the most and lead you back in here where there's also some contrast and some detail. Your eye goes to a lot of detail. So simplifying the sky, simplifying the ground, the grass, having the detail then in just a few areas here, some in the sheep, and then right there. So creating patterns of, or creating big shapes where you have some detail and big shapes where you don't have hardly any at all. You don't want detail everywhere because then your eye doesn't focus anywhere. But this has sharpest edges on it, darkest dark, lightest light. And your eye goes there. Again, he's got to put it somewhere. Could put it back in here. He could de-emphasize this shadow. It would still be shadow, but he could make it lighter and make the darkest darks back in here. Now, he's breaking a rule if he were to do that, because your darkest darks would be in the foreground, technically. But as artists, we're trying to interpret the photograph, create interest where we want to. We want the painting to say something not the camera. So I might move the darkest dark back in here. But when I do that, I'm going to lose some depth. And maybe I'm okay that with that. A lot of artists will flatten out their painting uh, to make the design stand out more or uh, to emphasize another area, lose some depth. So I would definitely lose depth if I came in here and made my darkest darks back in here and lighten these darks. But I might want to pull the interest there first for whatever reason. So you don't always have to pick the obvious thing in your reference to make it the focal point. You can decide where you want it and de-emphasize everything else. But the pattern of sheep here is trickly to pull your eye back into this area right, right there. Now let's go to some photographs. Um, and again, some of these I worked on Photoshop and others I will put the painting next to the photograph to show the de-emphasis. This is in um, Tetons in the summer. This is July, I think. So it's very green. Uh, there's no color that really jumps out, no strong color. Maybe back in here there's some warmth, warm grayish orange that jumps a little bit. 
there's some color in the flowers here, these orange flowers, white flowers, that they just lead you right off. So I want to interpret this differently. I want to decide where I want the viewer to look first. And I'm going to pick right in here, the sunlit area back in here, sunlit here, and then this dark shadow of the trees in there. And that's going to be my focal point. And then have something to pull the eye in. It could be different colored grasses in here, real subtle. Or I can take these flowers and pull them back into the background. Here's my changes. So use some of the orange flowers to pull the eye in. This is my emphasis right here. Um, put my strongest color. Obviously, I have a little bit more sunlight now hitting these trees right in here. Um, because it's my painting, I can choose to do what I want. I don't have to copy the photograph. Photograph is just a place to start. It's not something you have to copy it. Photograph gives you an idea. You can run with it, you know, do thumbnail drawings where you can rearrange some things to make a better composition. Emphasize stronger color where I want to, this stronger yellow green here. Emphasize the bare spot on the hill right there. A little bit stronger orange. And, uh, and then the background mountain with the sunlight, the warm kind of grayish violet. Um, now I didn't soften edges, I would soften these edges a little bit in the background and soften these edges in here that are in shadow so that these edges would be the sharpest and that's what draws your eye first. And then you can pick up the trail of flowers and lead in here and around and go all over the place. Here's a painting with a photograph, this is in Georgia. And as you know, early morning, so this real strong shadow pattern across the front, I opened it up a little bit by creating some dappled light in front. Uh, but my interest or my emphasis is right in here. Um, and this is autumn, the photograph is autumn. I maybe moved the autumn time up a couple of weeks to where it's a little stronger with the uh, autumn color. So instead of just a yellow green in some of these, I made a yellow green with orange in it, maybe a little stronger orange here, but that's my strongest color. My sharpest edge will be right along in here and I'll soften edges everywhere else. Even in here, I'll soften these slightly. Um, still going to be hard edges here and here, but not as hard as there. Or maybe these edges of the trunks in there against the shadow. So think through your edges as well, as well as the contrast. I de-emphasize the value and color here in the lights and would probably de-emphasize these just a little bit more, make it slightly grayer, not quite as light so that these are, well, this might be lightest, but it won't be as intense color-wise as in there. And then I have the obvious path of the road or the line on the road um, leading you up and around. Picks up, I'm gonna place the, this painting's not done yet. You can see the clouds haven't been painted, but pull you over here and then down and then out again. So a definite decision on shapes to create more of a circular composition that can kind of wind your eye around a little bit more. I mean, I see that here, but it does need those clouds to pull you in there. And um, again, this isn't done yet. And made some decisions to crop, cropped in here, zoomed in to what's more important and then made the focal point in there. Now this is in uh, Yosemite, California. And this one has, um, kind of a focal point or an emphasis already. And that's down here with the bridge, the really strong dark trees here uh, against the lighter background and the lighter bridge. And that's gonna be my focal point. It has this rock here too. Even though it's not sunlit, it's very light and jumps out pretty good. So that area, probably right in here, will be focal point. Here's my 
changes, um, not just making, you know, a little bit strong, still shadow, a little bit lighter shadow, but stronger color along the edge. My darkest dark will be in these sh deep shadows here. And then the darks will get a little lighter as they go this way. When I paint, I don't do it on this, it's just too time consuming. And then my strongest color in these background trees is gonna be right here next to the shadow. So I'm gradually getting a little bit more intense color-wise. And then I would pop that bridge a little lighter. There's some dead leaves piled up around here from fallen trees. Um, so just push the orange a bit more. It may not be in the photo, but again, the photo is just a place to start. We don't wanna copy it. And I'm gonna use colors that are gonna make the painting work better. I don't wanna just use colors that I see in the reference. Because uh, color in photography is not very good. And if you just copy it literally, instead of thinking through what color works best in that area, um, your painting is just not going to work as well. It's not going to look like a painting. It will look like you've tried to copy a photograph. So you can see the difference there. I'd keep my sharpest edges around here, darkest dark here. Probably lighten that dark back there. It's too far away to be that dark. But... Um, Contrast will be from here to here. Now there's contrast over here. You know, there's contrast over here and here, but not as much as there, because this light's a lot lighter. Not the darkest dark, but the darks are really dark, has the most contrast. All right, next one here, this is in Colorado. As this stands now, nothing really stands out more as a focal point. Maybe this does because of the light on the barn or the house. But I do want to zoom in. Um, I do like all the clouds. I think they, so I would probably show all the clouds. Really get rid of a lot of this foreground and work with that. Because I don't care about this. Now I might like that tree and you think, oh gee, I really like that tree as well. So I'm going to spread it out a little further. But beware of doing that. Beware of trying to get everything to fit into your, your canvas because then it just gets bigger, more cluttered. Uh, the focal points get smaller. So zoom into what you think you want to emphasize and then see how much you can pull back and include. And at some point you're going to include too much. So this is my, these are my changes here. I got rid of a lot of the left side, not much right side. Got rid of, rid of a lot of the foreground. And I'm using these greens here, this green grass against the yellow grass. And I don't care what the photograph, I don't know what the photograph shows. Really doesn't show any yellow green grass. There's some deeper green and lighter green. But whatever it is, I'm using value change and color change to create this pattern of green grass that leads you here. And then this pulls you up to here. And I've kind of emphasized this area a bit more because I'm going to have, I'm going to darken this dark in here. And again, I'll lose some depth because I'm making a shadow in the middle ground a bit darker. It should be lighter on my flat canvas to show depth, but I would rather have that stand out more. So I also got the greens greener, a little more intense, a little more saturated here and my lightest light will be here. Not in the clouds, but it'll be right there. So that's my uh, focal area. Right in there. So I'll put a few darker darks. This still stands out, but it's more of a secondary. I think your eye goes here first, then you pick up this, then you can come back to these greens and it just winds you around all over. So again, remember, rules can be broken as long as you realize when you break them what's, what's going to happen. I'm going to lose depth. We work on a flat, two-dimensional surface. The only way we can show depth is by having the darks get lighter as they go back, have objects get lighter and cooler, too. Um, so when I break one of those rules for a purpose that I think is good, I'm, I'm going to lose some, some depth. And a lot of artists did that. They would flatten their paintings. Mary Cassatt 
flattened a lot of her, her interiors to emphasize more the design, uh, the big shapes and the design of the composition rather than worrying about showing so much depth in her interior. Here's a photograph from California near um, Yosemite. And what I liked was this, you know, area right in here, the whole background, middle ground, foreground creek. Uh, but something still has to have the strongest color. Something still has to have the, you know, darkest dark, lightest light. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to crop because I don't want to paint everything. Making this a bit more of a square. Because my what I liked was the background mountains, the shapes of them and the pattern of the shadow. I liked these trees in here and I liked the creek and I liked the shadow in the foreground. And all that was on top of each other. It wasn't spread out real wide, which would make a better horizontal composition. It's stacked on top of each other. So a square or a vertical composition works better. So that's why I picked the, I don't know if it's exactly square. It might be more vertical than square, but that's because the shapes are stacked on top of each other in a very long, composition like this, while well, it has some nice stuff too, if I was going to make it a horizontal, I would de-emphasize the mountains a little bit and um, image crop. So there would be my horizontal view. And I don't like it as much because it has so much stuff on either side that's away from my focal point or what it is I want to emphasize. So I'm going to go with the square or vertical. I guess it is more vertical to emphasize the height of the mountains, the height of the trees and the way the river is you know, going more vertical than it is horizontally. And emphasize why or em emphasis wise, I push the color more here. So that's my strongest color. These have the same colors to some degree in them, but they're a little more muted, not much. Again, you're, the, the differences can be subtle. They don't have to be real, real obvious. I don't have to come in here with a uh, bright red to make that the focal point. I can just use a little bit stronger orange, yellow, green, and yellow compared to these trees over here and the color in the background. And the darkest dark is right here. I won't put the darkest dark here uh, because I don't want the emphasis to be in the foreground. I do like that shadowed shape in the foreground. It gives a nice abstract shape to the composition, but it's kind of a foil to make this area stand out more. So darkest dark, but probably sharpest edge in there as well. And then the colors as they recede out, we get a little more muted and edges will get softer. That doesn't mean I have to just smear and obliterate these edges back in here. I could, I think that works real well, but I at least want them a little softer than in here. So hope that's making sense that the um, idea that strongest contrast, strongest color, sharpest edge are gonna be residing in one area, and then those things get less as they go out. Next one here, a little bit different approach to what to do with everything else except the focal point. Um, and one thing we can do is just obliterate it. This is a photograph from Greece, taught a workshop in Greece there a while back. And I'm interested in this. Maybe secondarily, that boat has some interest in it. Um, and of course the barrel as well. So, but I'm not interested in this big trash can right here. I'm interested in the blue trash can, small barrel trash can, but not the big one in front or this car. And I'm certainly not interested in the background. So if I'm in the mode of just copying everything I see when I use a reference, I'm going to painstakingly draw these doors and balconies and windows and flower pots in the background. And I'm just going to get bored out of my mind 
trying to render everything in there. But here, the background can be just a, 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 an abstract background. The sole purpose of this background is just to make the boat stand out. Uh, and that's it. So I want it darker than the boat. I want it cooler than the boat and more muted than the brighter colors in the boat. So it stays back there. And I want my darkest dark right in here, maybe up in there. My lightest light will be this strip of sunlight on the boat right there, right there. It won't be here because I don't, I'll make this a little more of a halftone light and make this my lightest light because that's more in the focal area. But I can get some small, real dark darks in there to make this area stand out more. But I think this is much more effective than the photograph. Um, the focal point gets lost in the background. But that will do it. So remember when you're Using photography, you decide where you want the emphasis to be. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not, but you're using the strongest contrast, um, more intense color, a sharper edge in that focal area, and then as you move out, you're making sure that it's less than the focal area. And again, you decide where the focal area is. Don't let the photograph uh, decide that. So I hope that was helpful, and we will see you next time.